dead meme. Hey everybody, we're back. I'm going to show you this lovely machine here, the mill. Uh, it's going to appear a little bit later, but just a reminder of the value of what's going on here. Automated millstone, uh, advanced lumber, sawdust, the turntable, which you're going to require in order to complete this line. And without this line, you won't be able to roll down this uh, final side of the advancement to the next stage. And what's really cool is when you unlock it or get a little bit further, I'll show you how to create a treasure box that automatically loots stuff off the ground so you don't need to play babysitter. But let's get started. So where we left off was here. We made this portal. The next step is that we need to travel to the bottom of the dimension, of the beneath dimension to find quartz. We also require uh, aquamarine from the same place so that we can start building these axles. So let's take a quick look. This is an alternative recipe. Don't mind this, you can't do this until you advance to the next stage. You're gonna need these quartz in order to build these axles. These axles go into these gearboxes, which allow you to power all those machines I showed you in the intro. So we're just gonna jump in. I'm gonna go into creative mode so that I'm not being mobbed by creatures. We're going to talk about what, what this dimension's like, how you might want to prepare. So when you enter this place, uh, it's just going to be the teleporter and maybe a hollowed out space. You might even be hovering in the sky. So kind of be prepared for either eventuality, like bring some building blocks, maybe some ropes, whatever method you would like to use to get around. But the, ter the terrain is complete darkness. And if you're actually in the darkness, like outside of creative mode, you'll start taking damage, and it's rather significant. Normally, there's a lot more monsters, but because I'm in creative mode, they're probably not spawning. Uh, to keep in mind as well, the monsters here, uh, you're going to see a lot of repeats that you've encountered in the world, and the tech level that you're at is going to contribute to the strength or the monsters that could spawn in here. Let's get a little bit closer. Like, look at how many hearts that skeleton has. It's huge. So every monster down here is significantly more durable than what you're accustomed to. The darkness is going to hurt you, and there's a whole bunch of hazards. The terrain here is uneven. So, you know, uh, the dog boots, that'll help keep you alive. But we're going to go look for the materials, and I'm going to show you what you're looking for. All right, this is the black quartz ore. This is what you're looking for. When you mine it up, you're going to get it as like the... It's going to look like a traditional Minecraft ore. Uh, it's going to basically be like a, a block. You're going to have to process it. And it's the lower that you go, like a, consider the portal where you spawn maybe the middle ground. And the further down you go, the more likely you are to encounter this. There is a divide. Basically, once you start seeing the aquamarine, you won't see this anymore. So once you uh, collect, I, I would say maybe two sacks of this stuff, because you would. it's better to not come back. Then you're going to travel upwards, and this is where it gets a bit more challenging, but I'll show you what you're looking for. Alright, so this is the aquamarine. You'll just get it with the pickaxe. You'll actually get the aquamarine to give you an idea of how far up this is. I just flew up from the pit where I was just in. It is so far away that you can't see the torchlight, and I think I'm rendering 16 chunks away. So, like, it is an enormous distance, so just keep that in mind, like, you're going to be exploring here for quite a while. You're going to need a lot of torches, like, a lot. Um, at this point, you can make these better torches, the uh, Stage 1 torch, which is basically, your, you make the old-style torch with the fiber and the stick, and you can upgrade it with a piece of charcoal, and you'll get two of them. Uh, I'm sure you can work all this stuff out. Come here with some armor, uh, a lot of food, and maybe a method to help you traverse up and down. Uh, without the dog boots, I, I would hate to try and do this. It is no fun at all. But uh, I'll come back when I've got the next step ready for you. Okay, so you have an, a fair number of methods available to choose how to handle your quartz that you've mined out of the earth. I just throw them through this grindstone. This is the byproduct you're going to get. And of course, just throw it through this little cooking station here and you're going to get black quartz on the other side and this is what you're going to require to make these axles at this tech level 
The other fun one is the hemp. Uh, you're not going to be able to automate yet because you're not going to have enough of this stuff. So I'm going to show you real quick what the hemp plants look like. You've been seeing these laying around. If you just punch the top of them, you can get the hemp leaves, and then the thing will grow back a little bit quicker. If you kill the entire plant, yes, you get more leaves, but you also have to wait for it to grow back. You can bone meal this stuff. It takes more than one. But if you leave it in that state, you can bone meal it, and you'll get uh, you'll get one, but you won't have to wait for it to regrow. And it only costs you one bone meal. And this is the hemp fiber. Uh, you're, I'm sure you could figure it out. Like, look, you'll just hit R on it. There are multiple recipes available, but this is the one you're going to use. And now we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so when you've finished what we've talked about making the axle and the two and acquiring the two various materials from the beneath, we're going to finish this row and then we're going to go this way. So we're going to need to make a water wheel. This is the one you're looking for. Uh, there's a whole bunch of compound stuff in here, but I want to talk about these copper gears. There's a few ways to make them. Uh, you could start with the wooden gear and build your way up. Later on, you can make a gear cast once you make the stone version. And then you could use your smelter here with this casting table, and you can more directly get the gears. You don't have to do it that way. It's just one of the methods that's available to you. Other things to keep in mind, there's a lot of compound components into this. So, like, there's a lot of ways you can go about building this one. You can use glue. You can use rice slime. Like, I'm going to leave that up to you. Glue is probably the obvious choice because you can get it from making uh, zombie flesh in the cauldron, which I'm certain I've shown to you by now. But next step. So... I'm going to show you how to set up the water wheel um, and how the parts work. The um, the rig design, I may show that in, in a later video, but I don't want this to go forever. So I've used the aqueduct blocks. We talked about them in the past. So that means there's the water level one block that's clear and then one more. So we're two blocks off the surface of the water. You put your axle in first. Then you put the water wheel on the axle, and then it'll start to spin. You can put up to three axles before it will not allow you to do it anymore. After that, you'll need a gearbox. With an empty hand, you can hold down shift and right click to, to alter the direction that the blocks are facing. So if we do that now, notice the particles stop. And that means it's not actually functioning. So what I need to do if I want to continue any further or make a um, a turn in the system, I'm going to need these gearboxes. So this is the saw. Uh, I'm sure that you'll be able to work this out. It's got a lot of compound components. But basically, you know, use JEI, go through the methods. I'm sure you'll figure it out. And just for the sake of it, I'll show you what to do with it. You'll just drop any kind of wood product in front of it, and there you go. So we'll be back with the next step. All right, so once you've built the saw, which is the one I recommend making next, you're going to be asked to make the turntable and the bucket. So we're going to just briefly look at the turntable. Notice these are some blocks you've never seen before. So as you can see, a saw with any kind of plank will get you that weird siding. So uh, that's why I showed you the saw first, because you need it for the next step. And after that, when you do place the turntable down, and of course power it through the system, because it does require the gears, you'll make a unfired barrel clay extension, throw it on top, and you'll kind of hear this weird ticking. And as soon as it's... It's pretty much the very first transformation. You'll see it in just a moment. And there it is. That's the clay bucket. So that takes you right through to here. And with the clay bucket, you're able to move liquids around. Um, there is a catch, of course. Uh, if you use 
a clay bucket to move uh, lava, it will be destroyed. But you'll just put it through your kiln system, and there you go. Now, with the um, with the ability to move liquids, you're going to create a new setup with a seared tank with lava. This will allow you to smelt down your hotter metals, such as iron, which is going to be important. This next part, you're going to need a tree that's in the world It's relatively rare. I would say that it's maybe 1 in 5,000 trees will be one of these mulberry trees. So we'll just cut her down, and I'll show you what you're going to need from it. Now, we showed you the mill first because there's a process to this. I am going to need the bark from this particular tree in order to start working down the next line in order to make parchment. So I've gotten some bark. I think I've got some stored up, but we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so the logical choice is to head over to your uh, leatherworking station. Just drop four of these guys in there and spin it up till it's ready to go. And that should do it. Perfect. All right, so you get the soaked mulberry. You get four of them per use. You're going to need to dry it out on these drying racks. Never mind all this other stuff. We've been uh, busy. This station sees a lot of work. You can also use this station to make paper with sawdust and glue, but it's not uh, super important. It's alternative, uh, it's alternative recipes that we'll cover later on when we get a little bit closer or if they become necessary. The material that we placed in the rack, the soaked, soaked mulberry byproduct that we made in the station there, this is what it looks like when it's done drying. You're going to need to make this formation in your crafting window. And we got to go back to horsepower because this is basically going to complete this task for us to make sure we don't have anything inside. So you're going to need a whole bunch of these. Uh, I recommend like making a whole ton of them later on an alternative recipe unlocks makes this process a little bit simpler but in the end there's our final product there is the parchment or the washish you'll take four of these with an aquamarine which i believe i've consumed all of mine so we'll just let you look at it in jei Nope. So that washish, this is an alternative recipe because I am in stage two. You won't have access to that at this point. This gets you your parchment. That takes us to here. Now we need to make the astral sorcery journal. And we'll take a quick look at it. So you have a couple of options available. This is stage two. You can't do this one. You're going to have to go this way. One parchment, the plant cloth, and aquamarine. That will take you to here. You'll access that book. I'm going to set that up and come back. All right, so I've got my journal available. If you right-click on it, you'll open it up. The only one you should really be able to see is Discovery. And this is what you're going to be looking for, the Luminous Crafting Table. This is the guidebook to the mod. Um, like the other mods, this one's a little bit better, but I feel the documentation doesn't quite give you the, um, the line or the straight line path that you need to do to advance. But of course, we need to remember that this is also an amalgamation of mods. The, like the, the creator of Astral Sorcery never intended for this to be a part of the mod pack or blood magic and all that sort of thing so like let's uh, keep that in mind and not be too judgmental but i so i'm going to show you how to get around some of these challenges because you can see it doesn't ex it's not explaining to you how to make this thing but luckily we have jei so i'm going to set up for that and we'll be back all right so the blood magic makes a comeback as you can see, the Necronomicon is also involved. So you're going to need a few of these slates. Uh, marble, these pillars and whatnot. Um, it cycles through. You could choose almost any. Some aquamarines, a crafting table in the middle. And I showed this to you in the last video. Just to keep things short and sweet, we're not going to go through it again. And with the production of that crafting table, 
that will push you into stage two and you'll begin this process. Uh, stage two is very interesting. Uh, you're not going to get too deep into it, but uh, the methods that you go about things drastically change. Don't disassemble your old machines from age one. You will need some of them. But now that we're at the end, I would like to show you a little rig that I've set up. Uh, I mentioned the dog boots earlier. You need a great deal number of feathers in order to do that. So I set this little system up. The chickens are commonly dropping eggs and feathers. And if you use these Mark II Whoppers, you can have them feed into a chest. And in this new age, you can make a drawer that contains... Like, basically, it's uh, it can hold uh, 32 stacks of one item. So it's pretty useful if you want to store a great deal number of things. Uh, this is covered in the next stage. I'll probably go over it then. But basically, all I did was make sure that all of these whoppers were facing each other, right? So if I get a little bit closer in, you can see it. So I kind of just have them all feeding into each other. You can hold down shift and right click to make that happen. So I believe that we should probably call it there. We've completed the age. The rest of these are very simple. Like you can work all of this out on your own. I don't think you need my help to figure out how to do this or the barrel extensions. All right, so before I let you go, um, just like to let you guys know that it, I appreciate those who are watching these. Uh, my sub tech videos aren't doing as well as uh, my Avorian, but I do enjoy making these. I'm going to try and keep going. Uh, this You can unlock this pretty soon. I'm just kind of working away, and I decided to talk to you, but if you wouldn't mind leaving a like or a sub, or even if you just want to tell me, hey, uh, this part was no good, or you can work on this to be better, like, uh, or if you have a tip for everyone that's been occurring as well, like people have told me, hey, you could do this, and it's been making the videos better. So just keep that in mind. Uh, anyway, see you again.